Once upon a time, there was a mysterious woman with an extraordinary heart. She only wanted to do good, and that's what she did. All day and all night, she gave of herself. She healed sick bodies and minds. She disposed of nuclear waste in Chernobyl. She made available 50,000 eco-friendly products, including replacements for timber, plastics, petroleum, and tons of poison pills. She lifted pain and even shame for a number of people. And for all these noble reasons, she made a number of enemies. People with interests in the many industries in which she can crush it are her enemy. People with interests in the control and manipulation of our minds and behavior are her enemy. People who fear being seen for what they really are are her enemy. There are a lot and they are smart. The group of enemies succeeded in carrying out their mission to separate her from the people that she was intended to serve. And they did this using two primary tactics. One, propaganda. The enemies destroyed her reputation. They lied about her gifts and created more enemies of her by using fear and ignorance. They distracted people from her incredible work ethic and healing powers. Propagandists demonized her with the stenchy stigma of laziness and lostness, when really it's just a complete dissolution of caring about life's empty calories. Empty calories being things like false dreams, materialistic mania, shallow talks, shallow tasks, things like that. Our distaste for those kinds of empty calories get misinterpreted as being no longer interested in life, when really it's, we're no longer interested in facades and a lot of traditional life is facades. The second tactic is prohibition. The enemies, and with it, with prohibition, the enemies detained our cognitive liberation. Hear me out. We seem to lack the cognitive skills to even defend our own cognitive liberty. With the implementation of the Controlled Substances Act, the US federal government gained jurisdiction between our ears, behind our eyes, in the private crevices of our thought life, there they are, intrusively reminding us of our restricted movement and retarded growth. Yes, they have detained our cognitive liberation. Do you really think it's the substances they want to control? Cannabis, which they woefully and intentionally categorized as a Schedule One drug, has zero deaths attributed to it. While the very legal, heavily promoted prescription drug industry is responsible for ending thousands of lives every year in the U.S., and the opiate epidemic carries on. The mysterious woman in the story, of course, is cannabis sativa, and the list of her enemies competes with the list of her industrial uses. They are both very long. And despite its obvious superiority in a vast number of products across multiple industries, despite wasting billions of dollars each year paid by taxpayers to enforce a bogus war, the medicine, wisdom, and usefulness of cannabis sativa and industrial hemp remains wrongly classified and wrongly thought of because of corporate greed, because of undisturbed ignorance, and because of effect effective and persistent propaganda. And that's where sativa yoga comes in. Our perceptions are the real gateways to our experience of life. Things are exactly as we perceive them. When we perceived slavery as acceptable, it was. I mean that it existed. When we perceived homophobia as acceptable, it was. It existed. I mean, it's very common. And when the day comes that we perceive war as unacceptable, it will be 
And when the day comes that we perceive self-ownership as non-negotiable, it will be. An activist is a person who campaigns to bring about political or social change. Sativa Yoga campaigns to bring about change within the activist. As well as social and legal vindication of cannabis. It's a benign and beautiful feedback loop. This isn't a hobby to me. I care about these interconnected issues enough to devote my full-time attention to them. I've downsized and simplified my life considerably. All that I own fits in two suitcases and a backpack. Simplicity is my way of life, and with it comes profound peace. On the platform Patreon, I'm raising a thousand US dollars a month to support my efforts in communicating more refreshing truth about cannabis and our actualized potential. If more than 10 times you've paused, pondered, or deeply appreciated something that I've written, I ask you to invest in me. I'll be your muse and you be my patron. Just think about it. Help me to create more content that shifts and lifts. Go to patreon.com forward slash sativa yoga. Look around, make a pledge, help me grow this. This Sunday, our first Sativa Sunday, we will be starting at the beginning. I'll tell you what and why Sativa Yoga is, show you how it helps you to trust yourself because you are trustworthy. See you Sunday.